First of all, uh, let me thank for the possibility to be here. Uh, for already several years, uh, the European Data Protection Supervisor used this opportunity uh, that the Privacy Camp gives uh, in order to meet the representatives of the uh, NGOs, of the civic society, uh, the, the experts uh, whom we are working with on everyday basis. But we're here uh, in this place uh, we can exchange the point of view a little bit uh, less uh, official and a little bit uh, more uh, cooperative uh, with, the, uh, with the representatives of the civic society. You can see that there is a camera here, but the camera is only for my presentation in the, in the beginning. Uh, uh, that's the EDPS uh, camera because uh, we treat everything which is said by the uh, data protection supervisor as the public information. So in this sense, uh, uh, the, the, the statement, which I do at the beginning, uh, will also be presented uh, on our website, but we are not going to present the whole uh, conversation in order not to, introduce, not to intrude into the privacy of the people taking part in it. Uh, the debate on surveillance is, of course, as long as the history of the personal data protection and privacy protection. And the, the topics which uh, have been raised the last few years uh, are not new in this discussion. And uh, uh, even if uh, the, the story of Pegasus and similar projects started to be on the top of the news uh, uh, last two years, uh, we know that uh, many uh, associations, many NGOs uh, that are presented here were taking part in, so solution, in finding solutions to these problems uh, already before. So the, the history is much longer than uh, the history of the scandal, let's say, that we have uh, uh, at the moment. Well, in my country of origin, uh, the uh, effect uh, of the discussion about uh, Pegasus uh, has been already presented in 2019 in the document prepared by the civic society together with the experts. Uh, and which was dealing exactly with the uh, with the Pegasus uh, uh, with the Pegasus uh, uh, project. So uh, some of you know that uh, before I became the head of the National Data Protection Authority, I was working for the Ministry of uh, Interior, the Ministry of Home Affairs, and uh, at the uh, at the anniversary <coughs> of Adri a few years ago. I was recalling uh, the discussion we had uh, at the uh, monitoring process uh, of the selection of the Data Protection Authority in Poland in uh, 2010, where the NGOs said that it seems to be strange that somebody who was the high clerk in the Ministry of Interior is going to protect the human rights right now, because the, the, the uh, ministries of interiors, ministries responsible for home affairs, uh, uh, in the member states were always uh, were often accused uh, of misusing uh, this uh, uh, misusing the uh, surveillance methods and uh, let me say that uh, today i have to take uh, a little disclaimer and this little disclaimer will be that i do not believe uh, that the people who are officially dealing with uh, uh, with uh, uh, the uh, surveillance uh, technologies uh, in the member states, in the ministries of interior, have bad will. They, what they understand is that they work for the good of society, but this is not necessarily uh, an, uh, something which we all recognize this way. So I'm grateful uh, to be here and to present a little bit uh, controversial point of view on the subject. That's partly because uh, of my origin, but also partly because of the fact that I meet the people who have this uh, uh, other point of view, uh, uh, who, who are presenting other point of view and have to, uh, have to discuss with them and find the solutions with them. This is, uh, in my opinion, the high time to summarize uh, uh, our works uh, and see where we can go from here, from this uh, uh, um, moment when we assessed uh, what is going on in the member states. Uh, one year ago, EDPS published its own initiative paper 
on the use of modern spyware technologies. That was just at the beginning of the discussion in the European Parliament. And uh, right after the first presentation that the DPS did uh, in this uh, uh, topic, we proposed several uh, recommendations uh, with the idea of ban being in the heart uh, and being the loudest uh, heart, uh, part of the story. But in particular, we stressed how complex should uh, the organization of the oversight system be and uh, that uh, uh, the core of such system should be the dialogue uh, and inclusiveness, uh, in particular towards uh, those uh, not formally being uh, a public uh, authorities. Uh, so the, the uh, civic society, the NGOs being the part of the discussion itself. But at the same time, when I said about uh, the need for a ban, I said to the uh, parliamentarians that we should not believe that the ban solves the problem. And uh, the main reason for which uh, we should not believe in it is the fact that the works on this kind of software will still be going on in the member states, at least at the place where we are talking about uh, the military purposes and uh, the activities uh, of the uh, military forces. And uh, I think uh, now, uh, with the war in Ukraine, with the danger that many countries uh, feel connected with the security of these countries, uh, we have to admit uh, that many of the member states uh, do the work like that and do not inform about that. Moreover, they think that uh, they don't need to do it uh, because of the national security exemption. And you are also aware of the fact uh, that in some of the member states uh, this discussion has already been started uh, uh, from the point of view of national security exemption. Uh, I have the big problem with the na national security exemption for three reasons. Well, I admit that this is uh, not the part which is harmonized directly by the European law. I admit that the data protection authorities uh, have different, uh, uh, the different uh, duties in the field of national security. But I also admit uh, that EDPS has the problem to address the solutions which are done in the member states. But anyway, we think uh, that being the data protection authority of the EU institutions and taking part in the, uh, in the uh, uh, legislative process as the main advisor of the European Union legislator, we should, uh, we should be loud about uh, the fact. I guess that some of you may think uh, why the EDPS uh, uh, is talking about oversight when certain practices should be simply not allowed. Well, I agree that they should. Probably as a data protection authority, I have the natural bias, the natural inclination towards the supervision. Uh, also because uh, the impact we can make on the legislation is limited uh, by the political uh, will uh, of the democratic elected uh, chambers in the member states. And, uh, uh, that uh, somehow drives me to see the oversight uh, as the way to, uh, to, to solve the problem. But if I say the ban, if I say the ban will not be 100% uh, 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 efficient, then the oversight is the only answer. Equally, I think there is a need for a more comprehensive approach uh, and uh, provocatively, I may say that for a more positive approach uh, to the uh, activities like the ones uh, uh, that were the, the object of the scandal last year. We gathered here at the summit uh, and uh, we need to be able to come up with our own security agent, uh, uh, agenda. We need to be able to propose the plan and the plan for the citizens uh, to get on board with it. Uh, we should, of course, continue opposing uh, even more strongly 
uh, than before, ideas and practices uh, that clearly should not take place in the democratic society, but we should uh, contest the mass surveillance mechanism. Uh, we should respect uh, the clear lines drawn by the European Court of Human Rights and the Court of Justice uh, of the European Union, but especially the European Court of Human Rights. And I'm proud as a DPA to see the civil society here in Brussels, in all member states and globally fighting for it, even if uh, uh, the data protection authorities are not necessarily all the time on the right uh, uh, side of the barricade, uh, from the point of view of many of you. You know that there are the decisions of the data protection authorities in the Pegasus-like cases, and even if I don't agree with them, it's very hard to contest them in the uh, structure that was prepared uh, for data protection authorities uh, uh, to, uh, to, to uh, harmonize uh, the approaches. I'm ready to discuss on that, uh, but I need uh, to know that uh, this discussion will not be only limited uh, to the uh, strong words about ban, but also about the practical solutions uh, to these things which will exist. So we need a kind of new pact on security. Uh, the uh, data protection can be seen as the obstacle to security, and we have to admit it. We have to uh, finally admit that this is possible. Maybe this is, that's the time when we will say quite uh, frankly, that the data protection is recognized this way. The, there is also an alarming lack of clarity about the practices, including the EU member states. It is uh, thanks to amazing community that uh, many secrets uh, have been revealed. I'm uh, looking forward to the discussion uh, for, with amazing experts that we have here and to hear what are the practical problems uh, that we meet uh, in the member states. At the same time, unfortunately, I cannot offer you that we will go, EDPS will go, with the proposal of the legislative solution to the problem. But at the same time, if uh, there is somebody who can uh, in impact the, discu the discussion on the European level, this should be the authorities like data protection authorities, uh, but also the ombudsman. Uh, I will be mostly in the listening mode today, but uh, I believe that I will learn as much as I did uh, at the previous, uh, 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 at the previous uh, uh, privacy camps, uh, uh, which I attended already for probably six years, uh, uh, not necessarily only as the speaker, but also as the participant, le less uniformed that I am at the moment. So thank you very much, and I hope that uh, we will have uh, a lot of good outcomes of this discussion. Thank you so much.